Okay, so the step-by-step -step guide when it comes to reference the <coughs> impact area is that um, the, the reality of the golf swing is three things. Um, and we are going to talk about these things in more detail very, very soon on the channel. Three things that you have to control in the golf swing is that you have to control the low point, so the descent angle of the golf club. You, you have to control the club path, which is the direction where the club head is moving through the ball. And you have to control the club face, which means upon the point of impact, you need the club face to be square to the direction where you're aiming. Now, in the golf swing, there are a multitude of, of ways of, of doing this. So there's different ways of swinging the club. But those sort of three rules of the club path, the descent angle, and the club face have to be abided to. It's just like I said, there's a variance in what we're doing. Now, I'm not too concerned in terms of how we do it, whether somebody's trying to work on a drive hold release or whether somebody's trying to work on a rolling release. My opinions for the channel generally are dictated by the comments that I see that come into the channel, people that visit for golf lessons and general amateur traits. Now, one of the, the things that I tend to see as well with amateur traits is that we don't tend to come out of our comfort zone. So we're going to be talking about a step-by-step -step guide in terms of what you could do in a practice session. I'm not fundamentally, it's not a method. It's just that what I'm trying to do is break some sort of habits. Now, the, the first problem that I tend to with most amateur golfers is that coming in towards the downswing, the club face is normally a little bit too open. And then what happens is that we're also sometimes a little bit off plane. So we're either out to win or a little bit under plane. And then we tend to get flippy, which just basically means the club head is overtaking the hand. So what we're trying to do with this sort of step-by-step -step guide out of today is that we're only gonna be really kind of focusing our attention on short swings. But what we are gonna be looking for within these short swings is good control of the club face, get the hands ahead of the ball, and then therefore get the club on plane. Now, what I would do is let, let's manipulate the club face first because it's probably not the first thing that generally we would kind of associate to do. The club face, <clears throat> the, the club working back on plane, which we'll come to in our conclusion, but the, the, the club face, there's, there's benefits to not excessively overly rotating around the shaft. So what I mean is if I start to rotate my arms too much, you can see the way the club face starts to rotate more open. So if I kind of feel like I'm reducing that sort of rotation, you can see the way the club face goes from looking more vertical to a much more parallel position. Now, if we can kind of get that sort of feeling coming in towards the downswing as well, then it theoretically means that there's less rotation, which means there's a greater chance of getting the club face square at the point of impact. So that would be your kind of first thing. But like I said, what tends to happen with amateurs is that you've got to push that a little bit more. So then I would kind of hit a few shots where you're actually going to kind of feel like you're inducing flexion. So I did a video the other day on the hinge and hold method. And again, it's, it's not because I'm concerned about somebody doing a method and changing fundamentally the swing. What I'm trying to suggest is that, okay, well, the hinge and hold method would really close the club face. And you just like keep saying in these videos, if you never try, you never know. Anyway, you'll hit a few shots similar to what I'm doing. I'm not worried about how straight they're going. What should be happening is that the contact should feel good. So it should feel like there's a bit of compression. It should be a nice sort of sound that's coming off the back of the ball. Whether the ball is going at this moment in time, left of my intended target or right of my intended target, I'm not too concerned. The likelihood is that you shouldn't really be missing off towards the right-hand side for a right-handed golfer due to the fact that um, we are basically trying to get the feeling that we're closing the face. So we're basically just hitting a few shots, getting the feeling, or oh, miss it one there, getting the feeling that the club face is pointing down towards the ground and just doing some sort, some very short little swings. Now, you might have done that for a little bit. And then what you can do now is we're going to try and introduce the feeling of keeping the club face the same intention of it staying very closed, but trying to get the feeling that the hands are getting to the hit before the club head. And then what should happen is that, you know, again, I know you're not necessarily going to be practicing live when you're doing this, but I'd suggest that if you're going to work on your impact, work on impact. So similar to what I'm demonstrating here. Yeah. If you're going to try and work on your impact area and you're going to start working on your club face and your hit, then definitely break the routine down. Very similar to what I'm demonstrating and basically club face, hands lead, hit. Good. Now, if we put those two together, what should have happened is that if, as long as you're very committed to the club face and the handle leading, if the ball is going pretty straight, then that would generally mean that we've got the club path under control. If you're still missing, 
so the ball's going massively off towards the right, then that would generally mean that you're swinging too much in to out. And if you're starting to curve the ball massively from left to right, then that would mean that you're swinging slightly out to in. I wouldn't become too consumed about that at this moment in time. It's going to be difficult to align all three in one kind of practice session. I would kind of continue to work on the club face, continue to work on the hands leading, and just try and get some consistency coming in towards that contact for a few. So whether that means that you're hitting a few and they're curving a little bit left to right, or whether they're curving a little bit maybe, or pushing a little bit off to the right, I wouldn't stress for a few. I just try and ingrain those feelings of face, hands, and just see what happens to the results. Like I said, the positive thing first and foremost is that the contact should sound a lot better. Now, if you do start to notice then that you've done that for a while, and you're like, yeah, the contact sounds, feels good and it sounds good and um, there's not much curvature and they feel a lot more solid, then you'd probably go, okay, well, that means that you've probably manipulated the face a bit and you're getting the hands forward, which is a really positive thing. Now, what I'd start to do is just make sure that um, the shaft of the golf club is pointing down towards your target line. So if the shaft you can see this laser pen so if the laser pen points down towards the target line that basically means that the shaft is in theory on plane so another way of doing this is just from your perspective to feel as though the club head is traveling in a straight line back for the first couple of feet and then coming back down on a more straight line from your perspective for the first couple of feet so it's not excessively coming on the inside it's not excessively coming on the outside from a two feet, yeah, so if I kind of pace out two feet, the edge of the mat, from my perspective, the club head is pointing through that onto that little gateway, and then here. And then that would basically mean that I'm on plane, and then if I can try and incorporate that sort of awareness as well, then great. And this is how you should work on impact. You should work on impact where you're trying to focus on club face relationship, you're trying to work on the handle relationship, and you're trying to work on the club um, descent angle as well, obviously. And then what you can start to do is if you start to do some short swings, then you can start to take it back a little bit further. But I'd only entertain taking it back a little bit further if you've actually managed to demonstrate what it is that you wanted to achieve at the session first and foremost. So it's back, up, back through towards that hit. If you start to notice that you're doing that longer swing and you're getting a bit of a discrepancy and it's all over the place, then rein it back in and just go back to those shorter swings until you can start to get some consistency. Golfers know they struggle with impact, but they don't practice impact. What they tend to do is that they tend to just jump into the full swing and try and make amendments, and it's theoretically impossible in such a short space of time. So if you're struggling with impact, think about your club face, think about the descent angle, which will be controlled by the hands, and start to think about the direction that the shaft is moving, and you wanna feel like it's moving more in a straight line for that kind of first two feet back and two feet prior to the hit, Watch the upcoming videos on the step-by-step -step guide for the golf swing. I'm sure that will help add a lot of clarity to a lot of golfers as well. But don't underestimate the point of just going down the range and hitting a few shots, just working on your impact area. You might have to repeat that practice session a few times until you get familiarity and awareness to where the club is. And then what you're generally going to find is that you're going to be in a much better position. Catch up with you again.